So I've just checked into the corner London City Hotel and I wanted to give you a little bit of a room tour, tell you about why I'm here, what I'm currently reading, the book that I have already bought today, and also introduce you to my three new friends. All right, we're starting off with the tour and introducing you to my three new friends who are gonna be watching over me as I sleep. Now I'm trying to tell myself it's better that they're there as opposed to on this wall because then they would literally be staring at me and I would be staring at them and it would be a whole thing. It's just a little tidy bit creepy. But this room has a massive bed. It's also all in like this little cube Lego-esque unit, which I find really cool. Pretty convinced that the monsters live back here. See? Also, this yellow is so close in color to the one that I have on my lounge wall. Mine's a little bit more orangey. It never comes across right on camera, but I love the fact that I've got a yellow room. I don't know if they're all yellow or if they're all different colors, but I love the fact that I have a yellow wall in here. This hose pipe lamp is making me very happy as well. It's very cozy. I have a TV on the end of the bed. More of my friends. I don't know if this is meant to be some kind of art thing or if it's meant to be where I put my clothes, but I have put my bag on top of it and I hope that's the right thing to do. I'm a little bit too short for the mirror though. And then I've got a little clothes rack, a little desk, and then see, like this is all one unit still. And then you have a little step up to get into the bathroom. And then you've got like the shower and the sink and the mirror, hello, and the toilet. So it's pretty cool. Hi. All right, let's talk about what I'm reading, what I bought already today and why I'm here. I'm gonna find a place to put you. It is so hard to film in London without there being like sirens or beeping in the background and it is rush hour, see, beeping. It is rush hour right now and everybody, <laughs> is beeping. It's like I cued them all to do that. Okay, why am I here? <laughs> Tomorrow is World Book Day and I am staying very near to Brick Lane, which is a hub of independent bookshops. I have never been before, but I'm gonna be going tomorrow. I would like to try and buy a book in every bookshop that I visit. I was gonna call it a challenge, but I don't really feel like it's that much of a challenge. And I don't really feel like I'm gonna have to try all that hard to do it either. But at the same time, if there isn't a book I specifically want, I'm not just gonna get one for the sake of it, but I'm gonna be visiting three different bookshops, maybe four, hang on. So I'm gonna be visiting Brick Lane Bookshop, which is like obviously named for the street that it is on. The Common Press Bookshop, Libraria, and Books Art Bookshop, which I think is more of an antique bookshop. I have already visited one bookshop in this vlog, so I'll give you a little haul from that one. But there's also a Brick Lane Vintage Market that I want to head to. So the Corner London City Hotel is very kindly putting me up for the night. This is a PR stay. I'm going to be heading out for dinner in their restaurant soon as well, so I'm really excited about it. But it means that when I wake up, I am right by the bookshops to be able to start celebrating World Book Day. I've already started my book buying early by going to the Riverside Bookshop today, which I I am kicking myself for not visiting sooner because this was such a lovely bookshop. It's near to the Tower of London on the opposite side of the Thames to the Tower of London. And it is this beautiful little two floored indie bookshop. They're up for Indie Bookshop of the Year. Such lovely booksellers, a really good selection of books and books that I haven't seen in bookshops before, but just seen online. I had a great time browsing in there and I picked up Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. My favorite book of 2023 was The Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel. That book follows lots of different time frames, lots of different characters, and it talks about a that she references in her other books. So in The Sea of Tranquility, there is mention of a virus that spread around the world. And this book is set during the time that that happened. One snowy night in Toronto, famous actor Arthur Leander dies on stage whilst performing the role of a lifetime. That same evening, a deadly virus touches down in North America. The world will never be the same again. 20 years later, Kirsten, an actress in the Traveling Symphony, performs Shakespeare in the settlements that have grown up since the collapse, but then her newly hopeful world is threatened. Reading a pandemic book is not something I thought I would be doing anytime soon. However, The Sea of Tranquility was just that level of good that I feel like I need to read more from Emily St. John Mandel. There's also The Glass Hotel, I think it's called, that I do own a copy of as well. So I think you can read these in any order. They're all set within the same universe, but I don't think the reading order matters too much. This is definitely not gonna be a light read, but I really wanna read it. And I'm very intrigued to see what I think of Emily St. John Mandel's writing style in a different book. The book I'm currently reading and I'm gonna sit down and read in a little bit is The Reappearance of Rachel Price by Holly Jackson. This comes out on the 2nd of April and I am so excited for this. This is so addictive and so fun. It has given me goosebumps. So this is following Belle, whose mum went missing when she was two. 16 years later, her mum, Rachel Price, has returned. But Belle doesn't really believe the story of what Rachel has said about 
her disappearance and her reappearance and she's trying to find out what actually happened. Now I will say I think this is more like the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series than it is like Five Survive. I think Five Survive felt very separate for me from Holly Jackson's writing. I really love the first two books in the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series but the last one I feel like it just went in a direction that I just didn't believe it. It just, it did some things. If you read it, I feel like you're gonna know what those things are. I just felt like for the characters, they felt really unbelievable. And I think they kind of ruined it a little bit for me, unfortunately. But this is pulling it back to more of like the original Good Guys Girl to Murder, Good Girls Guide to Murder days. And I'm just, I'm getting all the goosebumps. I'm getting all the excited tension feelings. So I'm having a good time with this. I am over halfway. I just, I can't stop thinking about it when I'm not reading it. So I feel like that's always the sign of a really good book. And I'm just so intrigued to see how it ends. It's got me constantly guessing. It's interesting to see the transition in setting as well in Holly Jackson's books. The Good Girl's Guide to Murder series is set in a small English town, which felt like a really relatable setting. Whereas this one and Five Survive are both set in America. And I think that the US version of a Good Girl's Guide to Murder has been re-edited to also make that one set in America as well. Anyway, I'm very excited to keep reading. I am also so obsessed with Zelda Tears of the Kingdom again at the moment and I feel like I'm having withdrawals because I don't have my Switch with me and every night this week I've pretty much just been playing on my Switch so I'm having slight Zelda withdrawals as well but it's fine because it means that hopefully I'm gonna read more. I am going down to dinner in a little bit. I haven't really decided when, maybe in like half an hour so I'm gonna sit and read for a little bit I think and then head down and then Kath who you will have seen in previous London vlogs is gonna come and join me for a drink so it should be quite nice and chilled and then tomorrow we have got book shopping. Do you know what makes this even more unsettling? There's like a divide in the print here and it kind of isn't aligned perfectly and from this angle it's just yeah I'm gonna get over it soon but not quite yet. I just noticed this motivational message right from the sink here for you to read whilst you're washing your hands it says the best way to predict the future is to create it. <laughs> Hey everyone, Kath's here. Hello. I'm just gonna show Kath um, our new friends and see her reaction. Your new friends. Um, come in and see what's behind also, my Also, Beth bed. has told me nothing. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> oh, that's really bizarre. Yeah, but I have to sleep under them. Right there. <laughs> it's so funkily modern that I also can't wrap my head around it. Yeah, I was trying to work out if this was art or if I could put my bag on it. I put my bag on it and I think That's it's art. That's a coat hanger. Well, I thought that, but then there's actual coat hangers there. Oh. They follow you wherever you go, actually. Hang on a sec. Oh, they do follow you wherever you go. Oh no, they're always looking at me. Yeah, oh yeah, that's where the monsters live. <laughs> well, you can utilize it. Look, hang on, I'll utilize it. <laughs> Oh, you know what, actually, if you've seen here for more than a few days, you just dump your suitcases. Oh, that's there. true. See? <laughs> <laughs> so basically, you're going to go to bed, you think I'll have left. Oh, God, that would be so funny. <laughs> I'm actually oh. just going to be crouching there. And then when you finally fall asleep, I'm going to creep up and, like, reach over here. Oh, my God, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> In a lovely stay. <laughs> so calming. I sat and read for like an hour and a half with dinner and I'm obsessed with my book. I can't put it down. And then yeah, we had I had dinner and we had drinks and now I've come back here and been terrified. <laughs> Good morning and happy world book day. I am about to head down for some breakfast. I have got barely any left of this book. I cannot stop reading it. So I'm gonna go downstairs for breakfast, finish this book, and then we're gonna head to some bookshops. All right, I'm back from breakfast and I finished the reappearance of Rachel Price. Gave it five out of five stars. Absolutely brilliant. If you have not pre-ordered this book yet, go and do so. It is so good. It was so twisty turny, so many things to constantly keep you guessing. I had no idea who to trust, didn't know where it was going. There was just so much. And like the last 200 pages or so, 
Nothing else existed to me. All I wanted to do was read this book. I love it when a book surprises me and this one definitely managed to do that a lot out of all of the reveals and we got a lot of reveals. At the end, I only had guessed one of them that was coming. So I had a very good time with this really enjoyed it. I did have a little bit of an issue with something that happened at the end. I'm not going to give any spoilers, but there was something that happened that I just felt like I was struggling to believe that that is how the characters would have actually reacted in that situation. And I had a couple of issues with the way that that went. But other than that, I had a great time. Please go pre-order this book. I'm checking out the hotel very shortly, but I've had such a nice stay here. It's a really funky modern vibe and I really love the restaurant downstairs area. There's like this little reading nook area where there's board games and books and just like chilled area that you can sit. There's also like a massive restaurant area space that does breakfast. I assume lunch as well and dinner. I had dinner last night and had breakfast this morning and it's just really nice and chilled and I really love the decor. It's like lots of random little bits put together to make it feel like it's really bright and welcoming. Yeah, also pretty cozy environment. The room was really nice and welcoming too. I loved having this humongous bed, albeit with three people watching over me whose eyes do follow me as I walk around the room. <laughs> but I've had a great time. Thank you so much, the Corner London City Hotel for having me. If anybody is coming to this area, I'd highly recommend this hotel. It's cozy, it's funky, it's fun, and it's in a really good location. Right, we are heading into Brick Lane now to do some book shopping. I'm sure many books are gonna be bought and I'm okay with that. I mean, clearly I've finished my current read, so now I need something else to read. I mean, I've got Station Eleven, but I kind of, I wanna pick up a thriller. I don't know what. I mean, I've got thrillers, but I want a thriller like right now, immediately, because this has left a thriller shaped hole in my heart. Okay, let's go book shopping. Goodbye, new friends. Suddenly, the world I used to know, I see it differently. You woke me from a dream, now here's reality. Baby, baby, you are really hurting me. Cause every time. few days but I am back from London. I have a book haul. I did not film this book haul on the night that I got back because I ended up just feeling absolutely zombified knackered but I bought how many books did I buy? I bought five books. I was gonna buy a book in every bookshop. The only bookshop I didn't was the Common Press bookshop because honestly I just wasn't fancying anything in there and I didn't want to buy something just for the sake of it. But I did also head to Waterstones. This was meant to just be an indie bookshopping trip. However, I really wanted to see if they had the Tainted Cup, which they did not, <laughs> but they did have two other books I fancied and they were doing double points. So I visited three, four, four indies across the scope of this weekend. I've just realized I actually bought six books if you count the book I bought on the Wednesday, which I need to go find. Where is that? Where is that? Hang on. Oh my God, I'd left it in the back. I totally forgot about it. So I got Station Eleven, which you know, we already spoke about this one. But then I also bought 
in the other indie bookshops. So the first indie bookshop I went to was Libraria, Lib Libraria, Lib Libraria, and I bought these two books. So the first I got was Harlequin Butterfly by To Enjo. This one was recommended to me. I actually, I picked this one off the table because I thought the cover was interesting. Teeny weeny little book. And I had a little look at the blurb and was like, okay, that sounds intriguing. And then I was speaking to the bookseller and saying that I just had like a a little bit of a thriller shaped hole in my heart and they suggested this one. The blurb sounds really intriguing. Successful entrepreneur A.A. A. Abrams is pursuing the enigmatic writer Tomoyuki Tomoyuki, who appears to have the ability to write expertly in the language of any place they go. Abrams sinks endless resources into finding the writer, but Tomoyuki Tomoyuki always manages to stay one step ahead, taking off moments before being pinned down. But how does this elusive writer move from one place to the next, from one language to the next? Ingenious and dazzling, Harlequin Butterfly unfurls one puzzle after another, taking us on a mind-bending journey into the imagination. I just think that sounds great. So that was the first book that I got. And then I also picked up Never Let Me Go by Kurosawa Ishiguro. I recently read Clara and the Sun by the same author, and I really enjoyed that. And the bookseller said that they have enjoyed this one the most of this writer's work. In one of the most acclaimed novels of recent years, Kasuyu Shiguro imagines the lives of a group of students growing up in a darkly skewed version of contemporary England. Narrated by Kathy, now 31, Never Let Me Go dramatises her attempts to come to terms with her childhood at the seemingly idyllic Hailsham School and with, her, with the fate that has always awaited her and her closest friends in the wider world. A story of love, friendship and memory, Never Let Me Go is charged throughout with a sense of fragility of life. So I've got these to in the first bookshop. And then I went to Brick Lane Bookshop, which was a really lovely indie at the other end of Brick Lane. I realised as well I have been to Brick Lane before I went with Jade and Kath in a vlog like a year ago and didn't really click that that was Brick Lane. But we didn't go into any of these bookshops, which I just feel like was a crime. So I have amended that now. And the book that I bought in that bookshop is Metronome by Tom Watson. This is actually the one that I am currently reading. I am about 89 pages into this at the moment. I was very intrigued by the concept of this, but also the reason I initially picked it up is it says on the front with Echoes of Emily St. John Mandel, who is the author of The Sea of Tranquility, which is one of my favourite books that I read last year, so I had to pick this up. Not all that is hidden is lost. For 12 years, Ina and Whitney, I think Ina, I need to look at the pronunciation of that, A-I-N-A, Ina? Aina? I'm gonna say Aina, I don't know if that's right, and Whitney have been in exile on, on an island for a crime they committed together, tethered to a croft by pills they take for survival every eight hours. They're kept busy. Aina with her garden, her jigsaw, her music, Whitney with his sculptures and maps, but something is not right. Shipwrecks have begun washing up, supply drops have stopped, and on, their daily, on the day their punishment is meant to end, the warden does not come. Instead, a sheep appears, but sheep can't swim. Aina becomes convinced that they've been abandoned and that Whitney has been keeping secrets. As she starts testing the limits of their prison, Prison, investigating possible ways to escape, she is confronted by decisions that haunt her past. Little does she realise that her biggest choice is yet to come. So far I'm really liking this, I've kind of got a lot of questions. Is it all real? Why are they on the island in the first place? What's actually happened? Why is no one coming for them? I have all the questions and it's good. Okay, I was still on the kick for a thriller, so when I went into the Waterstones, and this was literally at the train station on my way to my car home, so I asked them for some thriller recommendations and both booksellers reached for this one, which is Lisa Jewell's latest book, None of This Is True. I've read a Lisa Jewell before, I hadn't really heard too much about this. It, to be honest, it looks pretty generic thriller, but they both reached for it at the same time to recommend it. I mean, that might have been because it's on a buy one get on half price and it's a pretty popular book at the moment, but the blurb. Alex Summer, Josie Fair, two very different women who meet by chance in a restaurant and discover they are birthday twins. A few days later, they meet again. Alex is a podcaster and Josie persuades her to feature her on her new series. She is, she tells Alex, on the cusp of great changes in her life. Alex agrees to do a trial interview with Josie. Josie's past appears to be strange and complicated, but although Alex finds Herself, her unsettling, she can't quite resist the temptation to keep digging and to keep recording. It soon becomes apparent that Josie has been hiding some very dark secrets, and before Alex knows it, Josie has inveigled her way into Alex's life and into her home, which is when Alex realises that she and her family are in more danger than she ever thought possible. It's a thriller. It sounds thrilling. The final book that I picked up, I ended up seeing this like everywhere on the day of book shopping, so I thought I'd better pick myself up a copy, and this is The Book of Love by Kelly Link. First off, I love the colours on this cover, it's so pretty. Secondly, it just, it sounds like an intriguing time. 
it was in the adult fantasy section, but the blurb kind of makes it sound a bit more YA. I don't know, but I thought it sounded good. Supernatural beings and chaos descend on the small seaside town of Love Send, Massachusetts, in the wake of an unexpected return of three missing teenagers. Laura, Daniel, and Mo disappeared without a trace a year ago. They have been long presumed dead, which they were, but now they are not, and it is up to the resurrected teenagers to discover what happened to them. Revived by Mr. Annabin, the man they knew as their high school music teacher, they are offered a chance to return to the mortal realm, but first they must solve the mystery of their death and learn to use the magic they now possess and only two of them may stay what they do not realize is their return has upset a delicate balance that has held just for centuries it sounds good holly black said an astonishing gorgeous novel and lee bardugo said spectacularly weird and heartbreaking the cover kind of definitely gives that implication there's a lot of things happening there so i got this as well okay those are all the books i got in london i had such a good time thank you so much again the corner london city hotel for having me and making this whole trip possible it was great to be able to to celebrate World Book Day. I hope you've enjoyed watching this vlog. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you in the next one.